<laughs> right. Go on then, Adrian. Right, we're here for the Mocha Empire, which we really should rename because the Mocha Empire doesn't exist anymore, right? I mean, we should kind of call the campaign. Yeah, let's name the campaign New Chester. Yeah, um, that's it. Yeah. That's a good one. Really? No, no, I'm one? joking. <laughs> it is a good one. A few people that have watched it would love that. You know that. Like, I know Shane mm. would be totally up for the calling the campaign New Chester. <laughs> the next campaign. Uh, anyway, uh, it didn't. We didn't do much last session. We just had a bunch of downtime. I don't think we fought. Curtis, did we fight anything? No, we didn't fight anything. We didn't fight anything. Uh, Macy just figured out her magic a bunch. Wrecked Elsa's workshop and then the street. Um, <laughs> we found out that Elsa is really racist to her neighbors. Um, <laughs> we started work on Macra's armor. And we figured out it would take 25 weeks because the crafting rules are nuts. Um, uh, sorry. Alaniros did uh, some talking to some people, I think. Yep. Sp spaced out there. Um, yeah, there, there, to some people, there, there, there was a meeting and things were decided. It was decided that Laniros and Alwyn would go to Nadina Gravewarden to try to convince her to lay off or basically stop the attacks in the Northwest. Um, oh yeah, if you think about it, that was the most important stuff last time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Macro and Maze the invested into Shardals while she doesn't instantly get eviscerated in the upcoming battle. No, that's uh, not what you did, Curtis. You gave some random dude to your character knows 5,000 gold pieces, and then like a day later you were like, yeah, I spent like a tenth of that on building some blockades. That's what you did. You didn't invest into Shardals. We invested Defensive. into Shardal's future. You gave some um, homeless dude money. <laughs> um, yeah, he was homeless because he was building his new home. You uh, basically did a Mr. Beast. Whilst we, whilst we tried to uh, unlock Maisie's magical abilities, the nerds reached the Crystal Dark and the Crystal Waste. And then we learned that there's a shitload of blue dragons and that we shouldn't fuck with them. And then... Uh, did we even set off? Yeah. Did we? Did we even make our way there? I feel like whenever mm -hmm. you talk about these dragons, you make it seem like there's a lot more dragons than have ever been described. I don't feel like the books use the words shit tons of dragons. They just said they I, blue yeah, yeah, definitely mentioned. You ended the session after getting Guandia's gifts. He was starting to get gifts out of his chest. That, that he had from like 40 years ago when he was studying. Like, he gave you a beholder potion that he made up, it was a bit of a joke, and he gave you a bunch of items. Potions, etc. Yes, we did get a load of items. They were yes, you cool. did. That's how we ended the session on tap. Yeah, and we sold him like a bunch of our shit we still had lying around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were going to do that in the downtown, but I can put this one because I've got uni. Yeah, I've got uni for... Yes, and I do believe. Yeah, what we've got and what we didn't have, actually, out of that, less earlier. Sorry, what was that? You know the list of our that party loot that we've got on Roll Fancy. Yeah. Did you figure out what was that, what we've got? Yeah, I happened? did that at the end of the session. Oh, okay. So yeah, Liam did his bit, Curtis. You just didn't do yours. Yeah, and I'd like to remind you, it's late, well, early evening. Sorry, late afternoon. With fifty-six days left until Yellow Star lands. Um, um... but. Of course, you. I think you guys decided that you were going to rest tonight and leave tomorrow morning, correct? Yes, that sounds about right. Uh, probably the other way around. I would have thought. I uh, see. So you sense. Yeah, leave at the night, so you land. You get there when it's nice and cool. Yeah, I mean, it's just more. It's better to rest once we've got there, so when we wake up, we're fully prepared for the day. All right. So, a um, complement of spells, etc. In Guandia's mansion, you guys can use this time to discuss or plan how you're going to get there. Because I do believe you still don't know the direct route you're going to take. You found there were some good routes to take by foot. That you can go through the Feboan Plains. Yet they're uh, in inhabited by quite hostile tribes of Centaur. Or you could go to Port Phobos and travel through the Swamplands eastward. Which would only take a day. But is well swamp of course so not that it's dangerous as such it is it's just it's a swamp and... i feel like we decided on that because we also wanted to find out what happened to our flying boat you did want to find out what happened to your flying boat well 
Whenever you guys are ready, let me know what you're doing. Uh, I buy a gold. Uh, I buy an ornate box off of Grandia for four hundred gold pieces because I need that for spell casting. An ornate box. Yeah, just any ornate box. Yeah. Sure. Negate the gold. Already did that and put it in. I didn't think you would say no. no uh, it's only actually worth two fifty, but because you've asked for a four hundred one, it just charges you four hundred for it. But that's I, think, the I feel like the spell would notice that. I feel like the <laughs> no, it's your spell. You've now just spent four hundred quid on it on or an eight box, but it's now a box with four hundred quid. But I don't think that's how the economy works at all. <laughs> uh, I think it's really otherwise like you have a one gold piece gold box and you ask your party member, hey. Would you buy this off me for 400 GP? And he's like, there you go. And then he's kind of money back. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's how it works. works. It's only worth what people think it's worth. Okay, so... Uh, I think you are all together. Yeah, you are, because uh, it was Macra and Maze, Maisie that were training. Then they came here. And then the rest of you all joined after the meeting slash whatever. So... Over to you. Right then, are we heading off now then? I think I that's think... probably for the best. Right, I've got plenty of food um, supplies, um, but I kind of give away a lot of water. So do we need to go get water or is that something we can worry about when we get there? What do you reckon? Worrying about... The water when we get there seems like a stupid approach to going to a desert. I thought you might be able to like pull something out of like, one of your pockets that does water. Oh, oh, uh, I can do this. She starts the hand movements for a uh, cone of cold again. <laughs> yeah, not what we need. Maybe not right now. Oh, right, yes, but it can melt and we can drink. Or uh, I just, I'm really glad I'm useful. Um, you, you, we haven't determined that quite yet. We've determined that you can cast spells. And break workshops. And that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, any ideas, guys? Water? What we're doing? Well, um, we will have a safe place to rest. That should have plenty of water, but for the time in between, we need to arrange things. So I should bring a relatively safe supply. Um, I don't think it's too much of an issue. We will simply pack some skins and... Uh, okay, I have a bag of holding that I can store them in. Ah, so yeah, just get a load of uh, water skins then. We can do that. Fill a load of them. Yeah, so that's plan. Just buy, like, um, 20 water skins and just fill them up. Alright. You can do that. In fact, well water is completely free. So uh, you could just fill well fill it up with well water if you want. Yeah, I would just, I was counting on the fact that we just need some price of Oh yeah, yeah, skin, so two gold is... two gold pieces. It's pretty expensive. I don't know if we should that's that. some expensive water skins are. Yes. Silver piece each. <laughs> oh. Two gold pieces total. I thought you meant each. No, uh, no, not each. As in in total, <laughs> like one silver piece each. Like, yeah. <laughs> inconsequential. Better be gamer girl bath water because that much. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake! Yeah. Fuck sake. Anyway, so yeah, uh, per the purchasing of the, of the water skins and filling of the money takes like another hour at most. Well then, are we ready to go, are we? Yeah, I've been ready for a while. Do you think there'll be goblins? Um. Well, that's a racist comment, but probably. What about gnolls? I've read about those. Um, There's also some living next to me now, and they're terrible. Yeah, we, we, oh, we hung out with gnolls sometimes, but they weren't really permanent residents. More just goblinoids. What about kobolds? Um, there's dragons that live there, so maybe some kobolds now. Or there's 
only a few of them again while when I was living there, for I remember. I'll, I'll stay at the back. Yeah, it's probably for the best anyway. I feel like strong breezes might be an issue for you as well. Um, right, how are we actually getting there then? Are we teleporting to Phobos? I think that's probably the best way about it, yes. Indeed. Or should we, or can we, shall we, oh, should we teleport to Phobos? Are, are we then teleporting straight into the Crystal Wastes? Or are we going to walk in through the swamp? We'll be walking in there with a thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we can get a flying boat, so I guess we can fly over the swamp, can't we? Alright, right, so who's doing the teleporting? Uh, I will, so Arne has a slot for mansion so we can rest there safely. Alright, sounds good. <clears throat> Alright, so you gather up and uh, Owen, uh, step outside of the mansion with everyone underneath Cusen Bridge and begin casting. Uh, you get a few weird looks from people that has passed by but you know not long enough for you to even care as you just whiz away and immediately you guys lurch and land as if you've fallen from a small height um outside the astral conservatory in port phobos at the moment you land you see uh evening time that the doors are closed and outside in his tent, you see Frank going about his business with his hood up, and he stops, looks across, and sees you all. And goes, uh, uh, you're, you're back so soon. He he hello, Macra. Um, you've arrived just Everyone. in time for dinner. Everyone's settling down inside. It's a. Uh, do we stay for food or do we make a move? I know we want to get there for night time because of. <laughs> They're your spawn. You decide if you want to spend time with them. Well, the obvious answer is no. But, uh... <laughs> should we, we'll go... For, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be there in a minute anyway, Frank. Probably. We're going to have a look for the boat first. Do you know if the boat? Do you know if the, the flying boat ship's still here, actually? Oh, you you mean the Zephyr? Yeah. I... 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 I and then he looks sheepishly down. I don't know where it is. So it's not here then. No, not bollocks. Right. Did Five you lose there. a flying ship? No, 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 no. I did not lose uh, the ship. And then he stops and goes, "Who are you, Elsef? We've met. We have. I see how now how the ship could disappear." You were in the desert, right? We ditched you guys in the swamp. Oh! Sorry, you just... You're acting completely different. Well, maybe I'd act the same if the boat was still here. <laughs> once okay. again, once again looks around and says, I don't know where it is. Well, you're not going to find it by looking around in this room. I'd have seen it if it was here. Wasn't um wasn't it grilled ours anyway? Wasn't he like magically connected to it? We should have probably just asked him. He's probably had it back. I can't believe it. I I actually give you inspiration if you didn't already have Max because Curtis actually figured something out. How much would clear grilled ours made off with all the magical loot? <laughs> It was just like something that actually, like, actually is the truth. Like, it's actually right. That's actually what has happened. But like, if Macra would think that, that's just fantastic. <laughs> Blind squirrel finds nuts occasionally. Um, yeah, so that's annoying. Um, do you reckon we can get another flying ship here? Are they a regular occurrence? Uh, uh, I'm thinking I, I, no. I haven't seen one other than the Zephyr. Bollocks. Um, looks like we're walking through the swamp, man. I speak for yourself. I have flying shoes. Yeah, that's an issue. All right. Well, we'll set off in the morning then. Because I, 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 how many days travel through the swamp will it be? I think a day. You said right, Liam? 
Yes, I did. And just quickly, Arne, I'm okay with the spell, but I will read it. <laughs> I will read it fully, like from top to bottom, when, when during the break. Okay. Maybe we should uh, look to see if there's someone here that could act as a guide or something. There must be people from this place that head out towards the Crystal Wastes. Oh, oh, um, that I can do. Oh, the guide. Um, I'll look for the guide. I look for the guide, obviously. <laughs> well, there was that squat SWAT team of bugbears that did try to help us at one point in this town, and then they all got killed. So they were probably all pretty knowledgeable on that, but we'll see dead. if any survive there. I'll be sure to ask around. Um, let me do this for you. Uh, I, I'm so excited. Sure. So the plan out there. <laughs> the plan is for uh, Maisie to be your guide through the swamp. No, as in she's gonna go find a guide. Ah, oh, okay, right. If so you do the guiding, you'd be fucked. All right, Maisie, you, <laughs> you head out into Port Phobos at night. Uh, you see, there are lots of different camps. From from the height, they look like camps, but they are different parts of the town. In the north, you see actual houses made of what look like uh, like pitted brick <clears throat> and and slimy roofs. In the west part, you see Pole Town, and you see campfires and tents and stretched hides. Uh, and for, further to the south, you see the burrows, a thoroughly disgusting, slimy hellhole of amphibious creatures. Yuck. Where would you uh, like to is go? There any, is there anyone passing by the street? Like, yeah. just trying... Uh, yeah, yeah, a um, lizard folk, uh, standing rough about five foot, hunched shoulders. He's got a yet brilliant yellow uh, tint to his uh, skin, and he's holding a, a sack of what looks like wine as he walks past, and then he uh, stops. Hello there, Are you good, sir? Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't suppose you know of anywhere I can find someone to work for me? A guide, a tracker, a ranger, perhaps? A guide and a tracker? And you, as no, he smiles, you see he's missing. Tracker. He's missing most of his teeth. Yeah. Right. I, well, I'll tell you where. For, where to? Uh, f through the marshes, please. I'm going there. You see, I'm an adventurer now. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you. Well, I know my way through the marshes. I could help you for some gold. Um. Um. Well. Uh, good day. She walks off. Yeah, as you walk off, he sips the gulps almost from his wine skin. He's like, yeah, you won't find anyone better than me. And then kind of like stumbles through the mud, heading into the burrows. She does that kind of like that quick walk away with her head slightly turned down so she can get away from the embarrassing person as fast as possible. Tries to find the light and noise of any tavern. All right, so yeah, you just walk in. There, there seems to be some sort of tavern up ahead. Uh, you have to wade through like knee-high muck to get there, but it's on floating boards, like planks that have just been laid out. And there's some sort of uh, high-pitched tent there, and you see people are drinking outside. There's the sounds of music and merriment. Uh, just I'll approach a near a nearby patron. Um, hello, good day. What you see is a very short, short, stocky um, creature. It's got broad shoulders, but stands at about four foot tall. And it's got a snout with a thick kind of mane of blonde, wiry, brushy hair on the end. Yeah? What do you want, woman? Uh, do you have any, any rangers here or trackers or guides looking for work? I'm hiring. I'm in the business, you see. What were you, ex what were you expecting? Some sort of ended figure sitting in the corner smoking a pipe? <laughs> Get away from me, you idiot! Unless you're gonna buy us all drinks! <laughs> I'm a ranger! This, this... It's in the archetype, it's literally the archetype. <laughs> She's just like, what yes, actually, I was hoping just for that. She, she starts <laughs> That's where they come from. <laughs> starts scanning for people with hoods sat in corners. Ricky, <laughs> <laughs> wrong, wrong perception. <laughs> well, oh. is that, why is it not coming up? Oh, there we go. Hey! Okay. Oh, okay. So you move away from here. 
And eventually, you see another short-looking figure sitting outside a more quieter tavern. This one on bamboo, and some planks from plank stairs lead up to it. And he is indeed hooded, sitting there, smoking a pipe. <clears throat> and you see the embers light up his snout. He is the same type of creature than what you spoke to, but this one looks more knowledgeable. He has a set of broken glasses on the end of his snout. Uh, good sir. <laughs> Hello. He looks down, takes the pipe out between his giant teeth. He says, How can I help you there? You look lost, Missy. She does a quick count of his teeth, nods to herself. Um, <laughs> I'm looking for someone who might know the local area. Uh, you seem like a knowledgeable chap. Would you uh, be a chance in the, the market for any work? Work on what bounds? What are you after? I'm looking for a guide through the marshes. You see, I'm about to go on an adventure with five very, very powerful people, and I want to impress them so badly. So please, can you come back? A four. Sorry. I see. He seems to think. Chew on the end of his um, pipe. Hmm. I probably could help you. I know of the paths through the marsh. Ah. You won't be any danger, I promise you. There's a, w a wizard and a sorcerer and a, a, someone who can grow to twice his size. I've seen him. Well, I haven't, but I've heard he's very strong. And then there's some grumpy one who builds things. Sounds fine. Where should I go? Um, well, uh, uh, we're up at the, at the conservancy at the moment. Um, oh, what? You're... The you're up there. That's where we're staying, yes. Sure. Um, perhaps you could come with me now. Or meet us in the morning. I think there are spare rooms. I'll come with you now. And he looks behind him and then walks towards the door. Parts uh, what looks like hanging bamboo rods that make the door. And he just begins speaking in a language you don't understand. And then turns around and goes, The wife's fine with it. So it'll only take a few days. Excellent. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Okay, so that's Maisie's little adventure. As Maisie's wandered off back at the uh, Gastro Conservatory, what's everyone else doing? Um, Michael is deliberating whether it's child abuse to bring his children on this pilgrimage. <laughs> Roll wisdom. Um, <laughs> I guess he starts by asking the kids. K kids, do you want come? They both look at you. Uh, Fixer, Fixer has like a chicken drumstick hanging out of her mouth, like completely at an odd angle, grease all around. She goes, "No, why would we go to a hot, stinky desert?" And the seer, uh, Mimi, looks and goes, holds her hands up, obviously faking, even with a like natural one insight check. She goes, "I see in the future. If I go to the desert, I will die. So I can't go to the <laughs> desert, Daddy. It's too hot." <laughs> That's a lie. No, it's not. And I know why. Because I um, don't lie, unlike you. You always lie about coming back. Uh, have, I, have I not? I've never not come back yet. You've always Am come back. Am I not back. here right now? Yeah, but you're like a broken boomerang. Sometimes you come back and sometimes you don't. I've always, I've always come back, hence why I'm here. To be here now, I've always come back. They kind of go quiet. Fixer pokes you in the chest. <laughs> Where are you going? Why are you going to the desert? It's your ancestral homeland. It's not our ancestral homeland. I've never been it, there. That's not what ancestral means. Yeah, it is. Macro is so out of his depth, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's where, like, my parents come from. Where I come from originally. Yeah, says Fixer. Where your mum come from, where your auntie come from. Your auntie's there as well. Do you not want to go see her again? Not really. She was horrible, wasn't she? Now that I've got a knife, I'll probably stab her. She fucking wouldn't get close. Nah, she's um, too tough. Even with a gammy leg. Yeah, she'd still fuck your days up. Um, <laughs> yeah, fair enough, then. This is how bug bears raise their children. <laughs> 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 yeah, Mimi says, right, so you can stay the night, but then I want you out of my house in the morning. You cheeky little shit, you are. I'm bringing, you, I'm bringing your auntie back when I come back as well. So oh, she, look forward she, to that. She can, a little shit. She, she can stay. 
If she's not dead already. Well, there is that. I saw yeah, her maybe running. Have a... Yeah, have you not seen anything oh, since? No, I thought you had already gone to go save her. It's been like two days. What have you been doing? The fucking city's about to get destroyed. Why? But so is auntie. Need... Yeah, needs the many. She's got a point. She has got a point, but the needs of the many. You're all like, oh, oh, and Fixer's like, oh, yeah, Daddy, you're always like, oh, come to the ancestral homeland, but you don't really care about your relatives, do you? You didn't go chase <laughs> down your sister, did you, Daddy? I care about everyone, that's the issue. I'm carrying the whole empire on my shoulders at the moment. There ain't no empire, so it kind of fell off. Wow. Well, that was my fault as well, thinking about it. See, so yeah, I've got a lot of atoning to do. That's why I'm going on this pilgrimage. Well, good luck. And she sucks the last bits of meat from the bone and throws it, and it hits Frank on the side of the head, and he's like, oh. Can you stop bullying Frank? I'm not bullying Frank. He loves it. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish Chester was still here, because he'd fucking end you. <laughs> I feel like the children have a very questionable relationship with our squid. <laughs> okay. Um, meanwhile, I would like to reminisce about that time about like a day ago talking to Guanya yeah, when I would buy a quartz crystal because it didn't tell you about it because I was waiting for the uh, spell to be approved or not. I oh well, something. we can say we can like oh I don't mind you going back and saying you bought the component. Yeah, it's so just on. I don't know. That was the joke he was crystal. making. <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay, uh, what about Orwin and Elzef? Are you doing anything in the town this evening, or are you staying in the conservatory? Uh, Elzef just looks for a room that doesn't smell like bugbear and goes to bed. Yeah, yeah. likewise, staying as far away from the kids and that crowd as possible. Fair enough. Alright, so uh, the evening goes by, and Maisie, uh, you bring our friend who introduces himself as Shrubble's Coven Pelt. I've hired a guide. His name is Shrubbles. Shrubbles? Shrubbles, sorry. He has all of his teeth. And he smiles, showing big, kind of rat-like teeth. Look at those. I'm going to start to start. It's almost like this, the smile of a predator before it eats its last meal. His, he's very uh, accomplished. I found him in a tavern with a hood up and a pipe. At one point, he said, you have my bow. Macro, um... Walks up to him, towers over him, looks him dead in the eye. Do you plan to leave us somewhere where we're definitely going to die in the swamp and then come back and pick our uh, remains for the loot? Told you he was tough. Uh, no, well, see, the, uh, he, he looks rather intimidated. He looks towards Maisie. He says, the real plan was to just lead you through the roads, which is pretty easy, and take the money. That's fair enough. That's right, isn't it? You mean, do you know your way into the Crestal Waste? Do you know, well... <laughs> Do you know your way around the crystal waist? I don't know my way around it, no. <laughs> and he, he coughs. But I do know my way around the swamps. Uh, in the here by land. Because I've been there many a time on hunts. And also uh, foraging and, and stuff like that. Do you know anyone who knows a way around the crystal waist? No. Yeah, thought it'd be pretty hospitable. Bastard. Well, as long as you can get us to the Crystal Waste, I'm sure we can figure out something once we're there. Never been in contact with any, like, tribes that might wander in the Crystal Waste and dip into the swamp for food. No, I'm afraid... I'm willing to pay for this information. I'm not just intimidating it out of you, but I'm also doing that. Yeah, but, uh, look, I'm not really your Sandy Gold Kobold, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I've never really been in there, and we tend to not go that way. It's infested, you know? Blue dragons everywhere, they say. I fucking, I fucking said it. I just shouted up to Alsef, uh, <laughs> throwing rocks at a window. I fucking said it was. What was of them? What is? What's blue dragons? Blue dragons. Now, maybe some fucking rubber boots or something. It's <laughs> <laughs> some rubber boots, like wellies. Are you screaming at me at like 10 in the evening to make you rubber boots? Well, out of all of us, who do you think is going to get me the one who's going to get struck by a fucking lightning? Do you see rubber trees here anywhere? I don't normally see 
weird contraption trees floating about either, but you still come up with them. Well, they are made of rubber. How am I meant to know? Just... Are you only afraid of your feet getting shocked? That's a fair point. Right, hold off on the rubber boots for now. Oh! Make it a late I, I, Good thing you said that. I could barely contain myself. I'm making those rubber <laughs> boots. <laughs> hey, so the kobold uh, shrubbles says, I'm gonna just settle down out here and have a tipple. When you're ready to go, just uh, shake me awake. <laughs> yes! And he settles down on one of the stools. Oh, he seems competent. Yeah, sound. What are you drinking? Oh, me? Water. You said you're having a tipple. My crab walks off, annoyed. Yeah, Think he's yeah. gonna get some weird he, cobalt brew. You hear? He fell for it. All for me. Drinking. A lot of bad liars this session. <laughs> <laughs> My precious. A lot of Lord of the Rings references. Fucking, I know. Uh, definitely gonna lead into a fucking blue dragon lair. And then wait for us to get wrapped up in silk and steal our precious. Uh, my next character is going to be a very pretty elf archer uh, who can jump on flying rocks. <laughs> nice. Skip across them. Skip slide, across them. slide on shields. Just sh shit on gravity. Okay, so everyone gets a long rest. And uh, in the early hours of the morning, you all come to wake wakefulness. And outside... Uh, Frank is awake, and so is Lantix, who seems to be going about doing some business. I've got to check what that is. Lantix, you're a scholar, a scholar type. Do you know anything about the Crystal Wastes? Uh, well, I haven't really uh, done many expeditions into there. Uh, not in a long time, to be honest. So, in short, no, only what you could probably find in the library. Ah, uh, we've already done that. Blue dragons, shitload of them, apparently. Well, I wouldn't say a shitload, but um, there's definitely a possibility for nests there. Hmm. Hey, at least we can don't have to worry about food then. What what do blue dragon eggs taste like? I couldn't tell you. I'm afraid. Sorry. Uh, there we go. That's some more research we can do for you as well then. I feel like we're going into this pretty blind, boys. One six, you won't come. Sure, it's a good uh, expedition for you. Might write many of them. Very uh, complicated the books. Dark certainly interests me. I do have things to take care of here. I'm afraid. All right, okay. We'll get one of the nerd ones to write you some reports. Oh well, that would be exciting. Thank you. And what you can see, Matt Cry, is you're not really um, into what, like, Lantic is doing, but somewhere just to the side, there's some sort of contraption being built by him. It's, like, quite tall, maybe about ten foot tall, and it's got some constructions and some scaffolding hanging off of it. Uh, it looks like something that Elzif would make, but it's larger. Wait, make him? He, like, rocks it. complicated. It would take some degree of time to explain, especially... To yourself. <laughs> I don't think you really know what you're making if you can't explain it to if you can't explain it simply. Sure, let's go with that. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> you know what? Well, I'm quite happy with that man. answer. <laughs> <laughs> Macro feeling content to wander off. Well done. That was uh, very, for breakfast. That was very well, very well improv from Rocket there. Lantix could get an inspiration. <laughs> so, <laughs> find his old sheet and I'm going to note it down just in case. Just in case. Fair enough. Hey, Macra, have you seen the giant pair of rubber boots Lantix is making? <laughs> yeah, I've already asked him about it. He doesn't know what. He doesn't have a clue what they are. They're not mm. rubber boots. I was making fun of you. I realise, mate. Okay, I'm, not, I'm never sure if you're intelligent enough to get the jokes, so... You're the one who's changed. I've not changed. Well, yeah, except being older. Well, yeah. You have been wearing those clothes for a while. <laughs> clothes? What are they? Yeah. <laughs> I took a while to find a room that didn't smell of bugbear in this dump. Yeah, I made sure I, sp I spread my sands everywhere. 
while rubbing on the walls. It's hard when the elves keep cleaning up after me, uh, cleaning, up, uh, cleaning up after as well. Yeah, I wish they had some dignity. <laughs> oh my yeah, god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it's just the total opposite of Elzef. It's like brilliant. You've just gone from being so polite to just so fucking like <laughs> sass. Yeah. Okay, so Shrubbles is ready by um, by the morning, and you see he's acquired a goat, and he seems to be saddled and ready to go on the goat. Do we get to eat that? Is that a part of your fee? No. You don't get to eat Gary. Oh, it's got a name as well. They always taste better when they've got a name. Who hired this one? I believe that was Maisie. Ah! It was me, yes. It's all coming together. <laughs> he was particularly... He, he did become uh, particularly well uh, informed at the time. Although he does now have a... What? Was, was, the, go was the goblin riding a bunny not available? Look, I've done one thing for us at this stage, I think. And that's probably enough. <laughs> Why does she suddenly sound like the boy band? Yeah, that is mildly disturbing. Like... <laughs> but he's only bought a goat. That's probably more than I've done. <laughs> I'm a little bit confused as to your confusion. That is true. Yeah, at least we got a goat. goat. Why do you sound different? I don't... No, you, you I'm do. sure we can be asked for this one. We don't even know if she's useful. Should we just leave her here? Well, no, we did get paid by Chester to pay attention to her. Look, I'm really excited, and I will do my best. I promise you that. Um, I'll stay at the back, and uh, here he is. He's probably one of the best I could find in the village. Uh, well, I went slightly Welsh there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the biggest guy in the village. He <laughs> suddenly went a bit vile. He's with it all. <laughs> so how about we get going? <laughs> oh yes, please go the way, sir. Lead us uh, to uh, the Crystal Waste. Okay, so Shrubbles uh, begins uh, riding the goat down from the Astral Observatory. Um, you realise the ghost got good fun, despite the steps being crumbly and you guys having to hold on to the railings and stuff. He's going completely fine. And then he takes the eastward, northeastward road through the hills and the skeletal trees here that seem to hang like like large kind of skeletal wooden fingers above your heads. And eventually the sun is blotted out by the canopy of dead trees and uh, rotting weeping willows. And as the day goes on, I would want... Adrian and Rocket, roll me a d10. Um, Snugball, um, how are goats at faring through swamp? You don't really associate goats with swamps. I well, Gary here's good at rough ground, and you see we've got some rough ground to traverse. Rough ground? It's, it's less ground, isn't it? It's all just water that we're going to be wading through, isn't it? Uh, you look around you, and you're wading on like a like a path built on top of a bank. Two sides of a bank ra ra raise like five or six feet up to form an old crumbling snaking path. And you guys are having like to have to like find bricks that aren't loose or step on parts that aren't gonna like catch your snag your ankle or foot so that you fall over. And <laughs> Yeah, so as you are as the guy you just I completely lost my um my sentence there. Right. So, as, as you're going, you notice the goat's finding the path completely uh, fine, and you guys are having to like meander slightly. And eventually, uh, Shrubbles does lead you down land into what looks like it's built up. It looks like the lizard folk tribes here. It's got lizard folk architecture to it. it. Looks like they've built bridges, you know, hanging bridges over parts of the swamps, over gaps, over ravines. It is uh, smells also faintly sulfuric. The air itself is thick and muggy. Every now and then you're having to slap an insect away from you. But this place doesn't seem as untamed as you would have thought for being a very large swamp that surrounds Port Phobos. And eventually, after about four hours of travel, you do come across a hut. And as you approach it, he troubles, gets off the goat, heads in, comes out, and he hands you all what looks like a 
proffering glass of ale. Oh, get in. Best get your spirits up. We've got a longer journey ahead of us. And he, this is around about maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. They stopped, and he begins sitting there chewing thoughtfully on a piece of jerky. Uh, this is a way stop, uh, sort of functioning small tavern in the middle of the swamp. You've moved probably about 10 miles. Have so often? This is going to be an ace pub crawl. Yes, there are some, but less as you get closer to the crystal wastes, but there are several. There's a good dozen of them surrounding Port Phobos. You, you see, not like... Go on. You see, there's this new uh, craze among the uh, lizard folk, you see. Uh, they've gone on a hunting spree for what they call crunchy spice. It's a new little phase they're going through, but um, we know them as just big bees. So Ah, uh, yeah, we've got a... Intense experience with that. They've set um, these way stops up for hunting parties to relax and and and, and chill during the day. So I guess it makes sense. Do you not need to worry about like chimera and shit? Aren't there you like problems in swamps? Yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, and they are hunting bees. Yes, like bees' nests. Not for the honey. Weirdly enough, they sell the honey to us. But, right, I uh, thought you said big bee. You know, like the mage. Yeah, that's what I heard oh, as well. Uh, I've never heard of him. Oh. What? Yeah, that's oh. Bigby. Never heard never of him. Mind. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Forget that. Yeah, there aren't many um, creatures like the Hydras or Chimeras around here, big boy. No, there's not. They've been hunted to extinction this north, this far north. Huh, that's disappointing. Well, I wanted to fight one of them. Well, no, well. Uh, Perfect rolls by Elzif and Orwin led you straight to the way stop. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> nothing went astray. And um, that was a good part of the journey. Okay, so the next part of the journey, I want Laniros and... Well, Arne and Maisie. Arne and Todd, can you both roll D10s? D10. Yeah. yeah. Rocket and I are just too powerful. Too powerful. Oh, that's a bit of a lower roll. Oh, no, that's a good moment. That's yeah, a non-hostile encounter, that is. How much time has passed on this journey, just out of interest? Four hours. Okay. And you can roll it again if you want, because you spent time resting here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> oh! Oh, yeah. oh, fuck! No! I don't think it's the one you think. It, it is. It is the one I think. Okay. Isn't it? Oh, I'm checking your character. Oh, it's not. it's not. Yeah, I know. That's going to be a fucking sad day for all. <laughs> I actually thought it might have been, yeah. Uh, okay, so you guys continue travelling on, and halfway for the journey, Linearos, Um you begin to realise there are a small group or contingent of lizard folk not following you, but to your east, their east and south, they're mm -hmm. keeping time with you. Roughly about 200 feet out. Hmm. Right. Uh, how many are there? A dozen or so, you think? But there could be possibly more hidden. Hmm. Uh, I'll just inform people that this is happening. Ah, uh, Shrubbles is like, don't worry about them. Uh, the moment they see me, old Shrubbles, they'll realise that we come in peace. Uh, we should form up regardless, arm ourselves, and make sure there's someone strong at the back and strong at the front. Keep the casters in the middle. Pardon. <clears throat> Sorry. Just thought we should be prepared, that's all. You speak sense. Are, are you quite alright, though? Fine. I just don't want to particularly want to be caught with our fucking pants down on the road. Rude. Um, but yeah, the issue, you, you've not travelled with us a while, it's normally I stay at the front, get my shit pushed in, you lot pretend to be useful, and I actually kill everything. Makes sense, I've got the back. Sweet. Let's keep it that way, shall we? That's how you see it. <laughs> she completely misses any, any like, direct humour in <laughs> any way whatsoever. Just like, down the <laughs> I don't see them, but I will. Right, should we be moving on now then? 
Yes. Troubles? Hey, Troubles. I am just thinking. And then he hits the reins and begins to move forward. And eventually, maybe about 30 minutes later, you can all see the lizard folk from flanking you. They somehow got to the other side, and then they move in front of the road, and ahead you see a barricade of sorts of sharpened stakes and brambles and stuff, and a thick, heavy-set uh, lizard folk steps forward with a sh with a huge tower shield and a very, very big greatsword in one hand. He's hulking, this, this lizard folk, like seven foot tall, and he steps forward, nods towards troubles, and then in a kind of like grumbling accent, Oh, what you doing now, you Grubbles? I see uh, you've got people with you. Are they fair games? And Grubbles says, Ah, oh, yeah, no, these uh, these fine folk are heading to the Crystal Wastes. Um, I'm just taking them. It's my job. Uh, they're paying me. Ah, it's a shame. We were looking forward to some man flesh. <laughs> oh, why, uh, yes? You, you try it, and I'll rip your gizzard out. Ha <laughs> I like the spunk on this one. Don't see much spunk, spunk on humans. Spunk, what was no. the job? Right, okay, so... If you're not here to be, uh, hunted... We do sell some trinkets! If you want to stop by the stall on your way past. And he points towards a small lizard folk on, like, a small roadside stall. And the brambles are parted, and troubles leads you through, and you, you see this little little folk go, Come get your trinkets! What a com baffling... Crunchy Spice! Economic plan. How Crunchy is this ever get... Five silver pieces, Crunchy Spice! <sighs> Crunchy Spice! Macros seriously considering just murdering the pair of them. <laughs> the, one of the little folk slaps the little one that's selling the uh, Crunchy Spices. You know these humans and stuff, they don't like Crunchy Spice. We're going to have to give him Crunchy Spice Vomit. And, he's, and she goes, Crunchy Spice Vomit! And holds up a jar of golden glorious honey. Mm -hmm. Do you have Macros flick, flicks him a gold and takes the honey. Perplexed. He needs the calories to stop him murdering people. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Do yep. You, do you think we can just let the apocalypse happen in like a limited capacity? Just yeah, like that's been really tempted. See if we can just like focus it in all the areas outside the Mokul. Man, he just keeps doing this gesture, like just to comp just protect Mokul, and then just let the rest get nuked from orbit. Right, Mokul would be fine as well, honestly. I've grown more attached to my workshop in Longinia recently. Yeah, that's a fair point. Well, maybe a bit of Mokul. Some of them are alright. Alright, so Shrubbles begins moving you on past the barricade. Uh, Curtis, can you roll a d10? Oh, fuck me. Solely responsible. <laughs> Oh, that's a low roll. <clears throat> Can the group make me constitution saving throws? I cannot. I mean, yes, but still. <laughs> Alright, so as you guys are moving towards uh, the Crystal Wastes in the latter part of the afternoon, it's getting hotter, like hotter, like dry hot. And a swarm of insects passes you by. Um, small, tiny, biting insects. Uh, and eventually, Shrubbles manages to tell you that, you know, just to not not swipe out and irritate them, and they'll pass by as they take their fill. However, um, Maisie, after they pass by, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, you notice you're getting a rash up your arm. I feel like shit. She spits on the side of the road. Mhm. Mm and another half an hour goes by. She holds right. up her hand, shows her the rash. Troubles goes, oh, shit. Right. I fucking said we should have left her at the observatory. You don't. We're not even fought anything properly yet. They were tiny bugs. Macra, your solution to everything cannot be to just leave at the uh, at the observatory. Easy, big boy. <laughs> it's been working gloriously for me so far. Why would I not? <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, yeah. 
It's too sassy. Yeah. Yeah, so. Right, um, what, what's wrong with you? There's a rashlet. And his ours. He said he knew what it was. She points at shrivels, whatever his name is. Snugball. Snabble. Is there anything around causing this? Uh, yeah, it would have been probably the insects that flew by. <laughs> oh, just insect bites. Yeah, sorry, Maisie. It looks like you got malaria now. <laughs> yeah, is that it? Told you you should have had your ginger stab. I'll be okay. She like ties a leaf round. Let's keep going. Uh -huh. All right, so, and then an hour later, uh, you guys are heading towards, uh, like, uh, the swamps are beginning to dry up, and you're beginning to feel this heat, this very strong heat, despite the canopy. It's, like, really different. It's like being in a sauna. It's walking through thick air. And then, Maisie, you notice you're, uh, you are hungry. You are famished. You are beyond hungry. And um, can you make a wisdom saving throw? Whilst Maisie's obviously struggling at the back, and Macross trying his best to ignore it. The near us? How can it be mm. like there's a swamp here, but then there's a desert there? Um, well, there are multiple reasons. Um, one, you'd think that moisture would easily transfer into no soil, but if it doesn't stay there, it will just run through. Um, secondly, magic. Mm. It does seem bullshit that that always seems to be the answer. Um, Maisie. If that is your attitude to life, then many things will remain puzzling to you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there is some... Like, all of you notice that on the sides of the road there are these, like, large kind of tomato-looking fruits hanging from these uh, skeletal-looking trees. Only a few seem to be growing on each one. And Maisie, you're beginning to, like, smell them in the air. You're beginning to really, really smell, like, these sweet, delicious... Uh, fruity smell coming from them and you find yourself reaching for one and you look down at the rash and you see something wriggling underneath but then you stop yourself from grabbing one of the fruits that are on the tree and look down and where your rash was there seems to be maybe a dozen or so squirming tiny things under the flesh uh you there s snuggle whatever your name is troubles you got a knife uh, no, I've got a. I've oh, got it's a... annoying Maisie's doing it. Ma Macro chucks her enough. It's annoying Maisie's doing this because Macro's just about to uh, the mummy, a fucking scarab beetle. <laughs> that's, what, that's what she did. That's what she starts to do. Oh, she, she, can, she can heat it up. She will. But in fact, I think without even thinking about it, uh, she. Let me have a think. Oh, here, come here, Macro. Yeah. Light, here, light the sparks knife. up a torch for her. She <laughs> completely ignores it, puts the knife, the knife on the ground, and even as if she's like not even um, thinking about it, she'll send. Is radiant damage hot? Probably not. No, it's not. Uh, I mean, I've yeah. got fireball. I can use the electric knife for you. Uh, she <laughs> just does this without even thinking on the knife. The fuck? So you summon a massive flaming sphere. It's like five foot in diameter. And immediately, <laughs> immediately, the nearby, the tree catches on fire. She completely, uh, completely it like it's going to go wrong. Oh, she yeah. Picks it up and starts popping out some wriggly things out of her arm. Little it, fucking bastard. Can you make a medicine check? Probably not. I'll take a few steps back and observe and ready myself in case it seems uh, like this stuff's actually going to get you on fire. Uh, you, uh, you accidentally slit your wrists, you take 50 damage, unpreventable, and you see Maisie begins to bleed out. Okay. <laughs> 50. I might need a little bit of help. <laughs> the fuck? You all see that you look down at her arm, now covered in blood, um, and the more perceptive one, you see there's nothing there, she's just literally carved into her own flesh. Okay. There's, There's something definitely wrong with something her. up with her. And mm -hmm. the flaming sphere just pl splutters out after setting the tree on fire. She looks like at the flaming tree and then looks over at like over at the party and she's like, Lineros, you fucking idiot. And starts swaying. You take ten unpreventable damage. Chester did say to protect her. He did not say protect her from herself. Hmm. Yeah. Well, at this point, you know what I mean? I was saying, leave her at the conservatory. At this point, I'll just cast hold person on her. 
you know, I was hoping that she'd be more useful at this stage. <laughs> this is not even like this is actually probably the most useful role as well. Like, like I, it's so weird how when you when you did this, did you with like the diseases? I don't know why you've done this. I just want to see Adrian or uh, Elsa have to just walk over and just slit the other wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what's everyone doing? Yeah, is Mace... El- Elsa tries to check out what's going on with her, but Elsa ha- also has no idea. Alright, make a medicine um, check. I already did, I failed it. What's an and I'm casting all person on her, because this is not going to fly. Like... Yeah. I think it's quite obvious what's wrong with her. She's fucking bleeding out of her wrist. <laughs> well, I- I'm trying to figure out why she cut it. Well, maybe you should figure out how to stop the bleeding first. I mean, I would, but I don't know how. It's not really my kind of inclination. I guess uh, um, I, so. I just like spray, <laughs> spray some bit on it. All right, yeah, you spray it, and the wound closes. So Maisie, you get twelve hit points back, and the wound closes. So she stops bleeding to death, but there's still quite a lot around her, and her eyes seem to be flicking um, in her skull. Did the whole person take? Uh, do you want to fight the whole person, Maisie? Not this stage. Yeah, so yeah. Gives like a little nod. Just think, hey. Um, Makara, just carry her for now if you could. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've only just had a bath. Oh, how harsh life is if you don't leave all of your problems well, at a You've con- just had a bath. And uh, uh, what's the problem there? Do you, are you afraid that you're going to smell of clean human? She's bleeding. Didn't you just start consuming a giant jar of honey earlier? Oh yeah, <laughs> he looks at his hands. <laughs> he's just he's just covered in honey up to his elbow. He's just been sticking and sucking his fist. <laughs> uh, uh, oh yeah, fair enough. He slathers some of the honey on the wound. Right, I've heard that works. And then he picks her off and just just, just don't lick it off, okay? <laughs> Should we do something about the tree that's on fire? Nah, it's a swamp. It'll float her out. I'll frostbite a few times if need be. Hey, they're, they're, like, oh, currently, Shrubbles just looks totally confused down at uh, Maisie. Maisie just, like, while trying to get whatever it was out, nicked the major artery, like, literally cut it clean in half. And, like, there is about maybe a pint of blood around there at the moment. And it's sinking into the soil and drying and caking. Uh, the tree is now blackened, and what you noticed as well, um, especially Alwyn and Alirus, when the fire went up that tree and hit that fruit, the, tr- the fruit burst, and tons of what looked like maggots and larvae fell to the ground, sizzling. Well, I was just going to say, I was going to, I was going to eat one of them as well. Mm, probably want to avoid that. I agree. Mm. I don't know. Um, still can't attempt it. I wouldn't if I were you, uh, big boy. That's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be doing that. And they're not for eating, because they want to get in you, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, that's easy to survive my stomach acid. Do you know that the concept of a guide usually implies that you guide us before someone eats something they shouldn't, and not after? Yeah, we're knocking some money off of that. Uh, well, I... I didn't know it was their mating season. I didn't know they would be laying eggs this. this well, time I feel that's another thing that you should have known as our guy. That's another ten percent off. Anything else you'd like to divulge to us? Look, look, she'll be fine. This will last for a day. She'll think she's got infected, and she'll think the cure is these fruits here. Uh, it's it's quite a common affliction. You've got the willpower to resist their smell. See, currently they smell like rotten sulfuric eggs, uh, but when you're infected, uh, when you're bitten by these insects, they smell very sweet and delicious. It's a very common disease around here in the swamp, especially this time of year. She'll be fine. Fair enough. Um, uh, I'll reconsider uh, the 20% I've just knocked off if you let me eat. Oh. Did you say wriggling under the skin of the apple or under the skin of her arm? Under the skin of your arm. Yeah, it causes, okay, it causes, right it causes feverish hallucinations and hunger. No, which is why you're hungry and you're hallucinating things beneath your skin. <laughs> well then, Macross carrying her. We're moving on. All right, and within three more hours, the sun begins to set, 
and you guys begin to head downland slightly, like down, and then eventually, after climbing down some hills and some old steps, you pass by some ruins. It's like the ruins of an old tower. Um, it's not got its walls left, but it's got like its base and surroundings, uh, like low-lying wall, like and the base. And as you walk in, it's got archways uh, that seemingly have nothing holding them up. And as he shrubbles, gets off of his goat, he steps towards the edge and across from you guys, as you step between the archways and look out, you see, fuck me, you see this huge expanse of pure crystal white sand. It's roughly about 200 foot below you. It looks like the entire desert is in a bowl. Like, descent down. Literally just straight down and then just salt plains. In the distance, you can see some the shadows of some mountains, some very tall mountains, but that's about it. And uh, he says, Yes, so I have taken you to uh, the edge of the Crystal Wastes. If you just... And he points down the bottom of this tower. There's a basement here that leads through some tunnels. Uh, I'd advise during the day, you don't stay out in this sunshine. But now around these edges, you won't find many crystals, but the further you go in, there'll be these gleaming crystals that kind of turn heat into this condensed kind of sunlight that burns your skin. Anyway, well, uh, this is where I leave you. Uh, that'll be 15 gold pieces. Is that where the 20% I'm knocking off? That'll be 15 gold pieces, please. I'll just look over at... Uh, a now uh, like paralyzed maze he's still like <sighs> fine and I'll just fail right. well <laughs> thank you I wish you luck and remember uh, try not to travel out in the day <laughs> and he begins mounting his goat and exiting leaving you guys at this tower and that is where we are going to take a quick five minute break as you are heading into the crystal dark Got a, a crystal wastes it.
Yeah, well, it is 55 days left. It was 56 yesterday, then you rested overnight. Oh, right. Sorry, I thought you were days. traveling for 55 days. No. Like... All right, so currently you guys <laughs> overlook the crystal waste. The sun is currently setting, leaving kind of an orange gleam across the sky. Acro above you, however, the sky is completely clear. There is not a cloud in sight. You are currently in the empty skeletal shell of a tower that once overlooked the crystal wastes. Part of it has collapsed down the cliff face in front of you, and Troubles had directed you towards a basement that could, at the bottom of this tower that would lead down through the cliffside and onto the crystal wastes. You have currently been travelling for 14 hours, but you can carry on and push on if you wish. Sorry, are we travelling uh, through the? Are we travelling during the heat of day? You've been travelling through, yeah. When you moved through the swamp, you were travelling through the day, yes. I think. But now we're at the crystal waste. Yeah. We haven't travelled through the crystal waste at all. No. What time of day is it now? Uh, early evening. Right. So I reckon we push on then through till all through the night, and then uh, we'll, tr we'll try rest through like the peak of the days. Um, just looking now, is there anywhere that looks like? somewhat in shade. Well, we have to go through the cave system to get down first. The cave's not going to be red hot as well, though. But it's not going to... It's not going to be in the sun. It's a cave. Yeah, I guess. That's a fair point. Yeah, we'll, we'll crack on them. Alright. So, it doesn't take long to find the uh, basement. It's just a, a shallow kind of dip and then some stairs that are well-worn and smooth. And it takes you maybe about 15 minutes of travelling down the staircase and through, at the bottom, an old storage cellar. It's quite large, spacious. You see, you can tell it was built by dwarves. And uh, the ceiling's quite low, so those of you who are above about six foot kind of have to duck slightly. But there's old, like, kind of an old musty smell. You can hear rats running about. Uh, and there's empty sacks of rotten um, produce. And as you walk to the other end, there is signs of recent habitation. There's like uh, wheels and spokes and animal dung and hay barrels. It looks like maybe some travellers use this place to store stuff before heading out or coming back. And there is also some crates stacked up on one side and a sign that says, Walter, you sparingly, points down at the crates. Well, that was easy. And down here, it's pretty cool. With the sun setting, this cave is kind of a nice kind of 15 degrees it's Celsius. It's really nice in here compared to the heat of the day above. Uh, the door itself is a studded wooden door uh, that's not barred or anything, but it's got two ring handles that could be pushed out. Um, should we set ourselves here for the night then? We have a mansion, don't we? I believe so. We do. It doesn't really matter where we stop. Can we just stay at the mansion for free then? Does that not like cost us anything? Smell for it on my behalf. How much effort? Roughly seven points of effort. <laughs> but you, enough effort to where it doesn't matter if you go to sleep after. Exactly. Alright, okay, cool. <clears throat> um, are we exhausted yet? Do we feel like we need a break? Or can we well, yeah, you've been travelling for 14 hours, but you did take rests along the way, so it's not like you're like physically exhausted. It's that you could push on for a couple more hours if you want. How's my arm? Uh, it's healed up. A nice little zigzag scar. Um, you're feeling a little bit feverish, but you're starting to recover already. You are still incredibly famished. I'm really sorry about that outburst. Really unlike me. I won't happen again. You keep saying really unlike you, but then there does seem to be quite a, a lot of yous. I'm not going to try and work that out right now. Has anyone got any food? I think back where I have the provisions. Yeah, there you go. Chuck here. 
some rations over. Just eat until she's full, I guess. Yeah, it takes it double. Yeah, it takes about double the amount. Jesus Christ, that's been like lasting us for ages. I don't know what's gotten to me. Here, yeah, she has it back. No, I he's still hungry. Hang up. I can play some keep... stairs or perhaps uh, uh, any other form of trap caught that's around out there, if there is anything. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do much hunting when you're not really staying in the same place, but I guess we can keep a lookout for stuff on the way. If we can st stumble out there, uh, stumble across something, we can pick off with some magic or something maybe, but we'll be lucky, I feel like. Alright, so are you staying in the basement or are you moving out into the, the desert? Um, no, yeah, we'll move on to the desert. We won't travel through the desert during the night, so we'll forge on through the night. At least right. for a couple of hours more, right? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I agree. At least a couple of hours, but do we necessarily want to be traveling through the night? It's almost just as bad. It gets quite cold out here. Negative temperatures sometimes. We could likely freeze. As I've put on the winter coat we bought for the, the storm island. It's actually probably more beneficial if we do it in the twilight hours. Rest through the peaks. Yeah, we'll do that as well. But uh, I feel like it's easier to survive the cold than it is the heat. Work hard and add more layers on, I think we'll be right. It's easy to say when you're covered in fur. Well, so are you. Just really pathetic fur. Alright, so here's a thought. From tomorrow onwards, if we have a bit of travelling to do, we could uh, start off <clears throat> from relative comfort in the mansion. It would be nice and comfortable. Press up warm, head outside and start travelling when it's still cold and then travel until the point where it gets warmer as we go throughout the day. And then once we get tired of the heat, we're tiring again. It sounds reasonable to me. I like it. Very well, but for now, let's keep going for a couple of hours. Let's not make this any longer than we have to. The clock is ticking. Okay, so um, you push the double doors open, close them behind you, and in front of you is a small tunnel uh, that leads out into the desert itself. And as you step onto the desert here, it's less like stepping on sand and more like stepping onto, like, horse, like... It's... You look down and you see the sand here is, like, bigger than the sand in the Yellow Sea. It's like it's like stepping on granulated sugar rather than coarse sand. And as you begin walking forward, it very, very quickly becomes apparent that your shoes are going to be torn to shreds within days. Uh, it's like finely ground glass beneath your feet. This could be a problem. Hey, you take your shoes off. This would be great exfoliation. Again he says with natural defences and a couple of hours in you look behind you and you can see as the dark is beginning to like turn into like full nighttime dark you can just see the outlines of the dark uh, foreboding swamp line uh, high up about 200 300 foot on the cliffside and the, the remains of that tower that you had exited uh, around you you see these small protrusions uh, glimmering slightly uh, in the sand and occasionally you walk around them and uh, we'll say Macro stubs his toe once or twice and you see that they're hard crystalline formations protruding out the floor of the actual sand itself and they're like maybe once every couple of hundred feet some of them are hidden underneath and then eventually after about three or four hours travel and the moon begins to be high in the sky and you can see the yellow star beside it um, you begin to see larger crystalline structures like coming out like ribs of great animals twisting in random directions some of them come out and form cruxes some of them seem to be floating meandering just on their own above your heads glimmering moonlight and sparkling kind of yellow sallow light onto the ground below you as they move over and then suddenly crash to the ground some maybe half a mile behind you and you hear it boof, thump and um, at one point some of you realise that yeah, above you, maybe a few three hundred feet, there are maybe about a dozen or so floating 
large crystals and you remember the minutes previous when a large one not only 10 feet above your head crashed to the ground and you keep moving forward and moving your way between these crystalline structures some of them at one point even look like trees as if like a tree has just been petrified and turned to crystal and then you hear in the distance and you see bits of sand and coarse ground dust go flying in the air as parts are just falling out of the sky and then eventually as it begins to get maybe five six degrees celsius so cold but nothing you guys can't handle you do see an odd structure a large spiraling twisting structure it's pointed and straight sorry but it's like got this kind of corkscrew effect to it protruding out of what looks like a dune and you had not seen a dune so far uh you've just been flat ground uh but this seems to be built into the side of this just lone dune in the middle of nowhere. There's no crystalline structures around it either. I think we might have stumbled upon something here. Looks like a big drill. What's a drill? You've seen a drill? <laughs> what the fuck's a drill? Just show him one now, Seth, it's eat. Oh, charades. It I love spins that. and it digs into wood or other surfaces. Uh... No, I yeah, still don't know a lot. That's yeah, one. I love that. Do I look like a carpenter? You look like a rug. <laughs> 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 What a magnificent rug that would be. Right, come on. Then. That is genius. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's got me a little bit. Right, so, uh, what are you guys doing then? Heading Keeping an eye out above me. Uh, uh, yeah, you keep an eye above you. You currently, at the moment, Orwin, don't see many glittering crystalline structures floating above your head. And uh, are you heading towards the dune then? Yeah. Okay, so as you head towards it, you uh, see that this structure is probably about 15 foot tall. Um, and it doesn't uh, take long for you to realise it seems to be some sort of ivory, some sort of horn. Alright. It's a um, pretty big horn. Do we need to I really it? want to hit it dead odd with my copash. Well, is there any reason for us to get distracted by this? Only Mac. Because it looks like a horn to some something fucking massive. Truth be told, I was expecting it to be a structure that we could enter and descend downwards to the crystal dog. Well, let's Maybe. have a quick look around it to see if that's in any way possible and if not move on. Yeah, Macross wants to dig around the horn. Uh, he's, he, he, he's pretending it's a structure, but he kind of just wants it to be a massive fucking dragon. It's okay. a library that is <laughs> owned by an owl. <laughs> Alright, so Lanieros begins uh, moving around, not touching anything, but exploring and investigating the dune. Uh, Maisie just kind of uh, steps up onto the dune, slips a bit, looks around there. Macro begins digging, revealing the snout of some creature, but as you begin taking large handfuls of this coarse kind of glass-like sand, it's beginning to scratch. It's not like cutting you, but it's beginning to scratch at your hands as you begin digging. And it's an obviously a skull of something. You begin to see the rest of the, the parts of it. Uh, Lanira, oh, it's not alive. As you move around the dune, you see a tip of a wing protruding out of the dune. Like a, mm. a skeletal wing. This is obviously so how big is this dragon? Is it like city size? Is it like town sized? How big no. is this horn? It looks, if like I said, it's about 15 foot. Oh, no, that's fairly reasonable for a dragon, then I guess. Macro oh, keeps straight. digging around the skull, see if he can get some teeth. We, are we should on. take uh, note of this and maybe harvest some dragon bone. Mm, yeah, yes, dragon bone is useful, surely. It, it can be, but <laughs> not currently, so let's that's move on. And then I'll just start walking off. Yeah, I'm with Lanerus on this one. Like, it does have some properties sometimes that are useful, but right now, 
You get to yeah, fair enough. I am about to die imminently. Well, I wasn't going to take it with us right now. I said make note of it. Yes, agreed. All right, you move on. Um, it's coming close to midnight. You've been traveling for almost 18 hours. Yeah, so what, once it gets... Well, what, what we're planning to do, basically, is to get up early morning. So that now is a fine time to stop, basically. Because then yep. we can get up early morning when it's still cool and then start traveling into the day. So uh, I'll conjure up the mansion. All right, you conjure up the mansion. That's a right handy trick. Uh, you say it's quite flat here. Yeah, except for this one dune and the crystalline structures, it's incredibly flat. Uh, seeing as it's quite a, a flat land here, we could potentially uh, teleport to cover some distance. I just say look at a point in the distance before I start casting the mansion. Well, we still need to rest, but. Uh... Yes, but then we could do it now and we would recover in the morning fresh. Just in... And do it again. Well, by the time we're uh, sleeping now, we'll probably be up. We're not going to get much of a rest anyway, are we, to be honest? We will. We'll rest for... <sighs> six to eight hours, and then get moving. Right. Thing. Eight hours. I think six hours is probably the max we're going to want here if we're going to go up early morning. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the mansion is summoned and you go in. Um, well, uh, I don't know how you if he says that to me while I'm putting up the mansion, I'll. Uh, okay. Like I can still cancel the spell, I guess. Or I don't know how that works. If you start. If you don't finish casting well, the spell. I'd say that you had this discussion before you cast it. That's fine. Yeah, okay. Um. So what do you propose? Shall we just <sighs> go somewhere in that direction? Well, if we know where we're, vaguely where we're heading, as long as we can see in that direction, then we can at least cover some ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Let's do it then. Well, um, give me a moment, and I will. Um... <clears throat> Look around, and I'll actually uh, ask Makrai to take a tiny little chip off the dragon bone now. Makrai gets his carving knife out and whittles out a chunk out the the, the, the horn. Oh yeah, you get a, a small sliver of dragon bone. Okay. Uh, just in case we end up somewhere we don't want to go. All right, you are. I mean, this should be fairly simple. As long as I can see it, then well, you know mm. how it works. Yeah, we'll give it the teleport. All right. I mean, we could technically give it a couple, get some ground. Nice. So let me quickly Google something. How far is the horizon? <laughs> that is what we're Googling. <laughs> and I yeah. think, before you Google it, I've got in my head. Yeah. Yeah, that can't be right. I'm just going to make myself look an idiot if I guess that. Uh, Isn't it like uh, on Earth at least? Um, yeah. But... Yes, on Earth if... it's five kilometers. No way, I didn't know that. Oh shit, I had three miles in my head as well. I should have guessed it. That would look dead smart there. Bastard. Well, you lost, Curtis. Uh, I'm going to be re Seeing as it's flat, I'm assuming we can squeeze an extra mile or two by standing on the top of the. Um, the dune? dune. Yeah, you, you could squeeze a couple, like maybe 500 extra meters from doing that. Why not? You you know for sure that like, climbing to taller, obviously taller constructs and stuff will get you further. Um, all right, so you cast teleport and you can see it, so you don't need to roll, do you? Correct. All right, yeah, boof! All of you reappear in an expanse of emptiness, just like you were at, maybe six kilometers away, and surrounding you is odd crystalline structures that are just poles. Just looks like you've got like a small woodland of crystal poles protruding from the ground. None of them are pointed like spears. None of them are got anything else coming away from there. Just completely cylind cylindrical poles, maybe about ten foot tall, 
spaced about five foot each, and they just go on around you. That's an odd landmark. It is quite peculiar. Do we take a minute to have a look, or should we just carry on? No, I'll say just carry on. Right. I'll look for another point, make sure we're heading the right direction, and go again. Mm hmm. Oh. Can you make level 7 slots with sorcery points? No. Oh. He can strenuously cast. Well, we have level 8 slots. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Rock Rocket's character can do something called strenuous casting. It can like, po but this is high level spell. He could possibly ruin himself if he uh, mm. if he fails the saving throw <laughs> and be like really exhausted tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. just gonna cast it with an eighth level slot. Uh, yeah, you cast it with an eighth level slot, and then you guys reappear. Um, the first kind of earth you've seen, you re you appear near a mound of some sort. Uh, completely, um, a, completely like what well, spherical, it's like a dome. You'd, you'd picture that if this was underneath as well, it'd be a complete sphere. Um, it's not made out of crystal. It's made out of what looks like some sort of brown brick. You can see the faint lines where the mortar was filled in. All right. Um, could you indicate on the map roughly where we are now? The, you, could you make a survival roll? I mean, I know where you're going, but sure. I'll assist him if necessary. Okay. Yeah, I mean, survival is not really what I was trying to go for. I'm just looking at landmarks and things. Well, you have a feeling you've headed east, east, southeast. Okay, and like, have I seen landmarks that are clearly easily identified in the distance? You, if you can identify. Walking, like, in... Yeah, you can identify the mountains to the north. That's. Okay. Very, they're very kind of like shadow. They're just there. They've mm -hmm. been constantly there since you've been moving. Doesn't seem that the the mount, the one mountain to the north that you kept an eye on its shape, has moved at all. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna like guess okay. on the map, you guess you'd be like kind of like there. That's exactly what I was gonna get. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, one more teleport from me because okay. I have an eight level spell slot as well. Maybe right. we should. Uh... Just thinking about it, just see so you're looking at the mountain range over there. If we got a vague idea of where we're going, we could teleport to the mountains for height, and then looking down, we'll probably get a further distance out of it. Perhaps. Um, if we wait until the coldest point, the atmosphere will refract more as well, probably <laughs> add a few miles. All right. <laughs> 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 well, um, we could do that. I'm not really sure if we want to go there, though. Like, this, this is known terrain and it's known to be relatively safe. I'm not right. really sure how much it would gain us. Well, one more for now. We need to rest anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we'll zoom. Let's forward another five and something miles. Alright. Uh, kilometers. One moment. Liam changes our percentage progress. 3%. <laughs> no, the, one moment. I'm just. Oh. <laughs> ah. Alright, so as you teleport, um, immediately, woof, doof, immediately you land ankle deep in water. And you look around you, and there's just a pond. That's maybe about five, six inches deep. And it goes maybe about 30 foot in diameter and you're right on the edge. And in the center seems to be a marble stone fountain. Water pours out of the spout of what looks like some sort of carved creature and then trickles down the multi-tiered fountain into this complete, um, what looks like pond or fountain. The edges have brickwork, keeping the water from spilling out onto the plains around you. And you see, uh, on the far side, a tent with a small fire burning low. There is a stall outside of the tent, but no, nothing is sitting on it. Nobody's sitting on it. Did you fuck up and take us to a different dimension? 
Nope. But I will have a look around just to see what I... I guess it answers the notice. water question from a little while back there. You don't see any other, like, you don't see any crystalline structures. Uh, there's no observable landmarks except for the gleaming moonlight on the mountain to the north. Um, you start to roughly guess you're probably about 20 kilometers out now, maybe maybe 30. And this is the first sign of like habitation you've seen. Other than the spherical um, construction you saw previous jump, you now mm -hmm. see a tent. There's no animal nearby, like no mount or anything. It's a very like shit tent, like it's a, a like a one of those camping tents that has no front. It's just a lean to, basically. Yeah. Um. Do you want to see who's around here? They might know something more about the local area, and we can ask some questions. Yeah, people are exactly what we wanted to find. This is quite good news, actually. Someone else do the talking. People find me abrasive. <laughs> Right, so I'll conjure the mansion anyway here, um, just so that we can slip in when I want to, and then just close the portal from the outside. Uh, wait a little bit to see if anyone shows up within like 30 minutes or so. Okay, yeah, and within 30 minutes, you do begin to see a figure just on the edge of your dark site. Um, a maybe tall, muscular figure carrying something over, over their shoulder. And then there's a flop, and... Uh, Near the near the tent, and then this person goes low, as if they've heard something. Hello. It turns, sees you on the other side of the uh, pond. I'm just, yeah, be sit, be, just be sitting on the outside wall of the fountain. Yeah, and then there's a kind of a harsh voice, almost like nails on a chalkboard, as it's an obviously kind of harsh, rough, fem feminine voice. Uh, who goes there? And this this female begins striding towards you into the moonlight, and you see a orc, female orc. Uh, she's not wearing much, which kind of makes you kind of like turn away quickly. Uh, she's not wearing much on her top, other than a band to tie back her chest. She has a bowstrung over her back, uh, which seems to be made out of some sort of crystal. Um, she wears a bandana, and that most of her hair is like shorn short, as if she's just taken a knife and just cut it out haphazardly. And her what usual dark screen, dark screen, dark green skin has been like dyed by the sun, bleached almost a kind of, kind of like pale um, yellow color, as if she's got jaundice from head to toe. And her eyes are like kind of got purple rimmed, and she's got a few tribal tattoos up and down her arms. And as she walks towards you, uh, she begins drawing her bow, friend or foe. Well, uh, depends on you, really. You're more than welcome to stay by my waters. Fill up. Take as much as you need. It replenishes. But I don't see us staying overnight nearby one another. I don't uh, I don't rightly trust folk around here. Well, fair enough. That's a good attribute for someone alone in the wild, I understand. The last person I let stay here. Oh, she stole my javelins. Turn to Pharaoh and to an orc, haven't you? We promise we will not have any interest in your job. Macra, stay away from our javelins, okay? I don't want to shit javelins. She eyes, she eyes Macra goes, it was a bugbear just like you. Well, uh, we do tend to have uh, sticky fingers. Yeah. Too fucking oh, nice. Right. Right. It seems to be mainly on the female gene, to be fair. I should see the little one. It's fucking... Embarrassing. Mm. Oh, we, we were just wondering if we could perhaps uh, get some information from you. You seem to know the area quite well. We're just passing through, as it were. I'm, pa I'm trying to get home. Home? Where's that? If you don't mind sharing, perhaps we could make something work for you. Bebo. Hmm. I see. Ooh. Well, that's a bit of a way away. Yeah, I, uh, I took a contract to help guard a caravan heading north here. They were all killed. 
Only me left. I found this here water. Been afraid to move from it ever since. Huh. Do you have news of Do you have news of home? How goes Feeble? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Markrod uncomfortably just this is a copas strap. Um well um Yeah, they're all right, last I heard. All right. That's Yeah, that's nothing what major. I heard Macro. What, what, what did you hear? He you know, like sh 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 shoves, pushes the <laughs> boy band front and centre. <laughs> Wait. Well, maybe maybe I'm wrong, but and I'm sorry to say this if it is true, but as far as I was aware, Thebo was destroyed. Her eyes go wide. Not really. Well, I heard there was a lot of commotion there and uh, many people died at least. Oh, yeah. Those damn centaurs. I don't remember hearing anything about centaurs. Well, who would have done it then? Well, I, this is. Uh, did you know that the God King is dead? He's the God King. How long have you been in this desert? Months. Does Fima really not know about the God King? Is that she not just, a thing they She looks about? confused and she says. The Feeboan civil war with the tribes, right? I guess we lost. Never thought we'd lose. We had walls. Uh, Elsa just... has history proficiency. You can roll it. Yeah, that's from about 200 years ago. Oh no, you've been here well, a bit longer than... I remember that. I was around for that. Uh... The walls were kind of good. Uh, that was 200 years ago. <laughs> yeah, nice joke, Elf. No, no, I really got into carpentry at that stage of my life. Uh, you should have seen my works. Fantastic. Really made bank there. Uh, she, my first workshop. She, her hands go over her face. She begins shaking her head. She goes, no. Macro's just like... And then she shoots up and goes, what are you doing by my bond? Who are you? Have a I if I notice anything that's going on in this area that would cause it. You look, go, down, oh. you look down at the pond. Macro was like, maybe we should really drink some of the water, and then realise it causes short-term memory loss. Like, maybe we shouldn't drink the water. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, she would be dead if that's only the only thing it does. Yeah, well, it seems obviously it extends life, but then also, you know, yeah. forget I'll, what you're doing. I'll empty out one of the water skins from the pack. Mark it really well. Okay. <laughs> Make sure we know it's that one. Yeah. And uh, take it with us. Hey, Makra, don't you want to drink some of it? Maybe you'll die less soon. Um, um, Owen, yeah. with your um sight, you don't see anything magical about the water. No, no kind of aura or anything like that. The only aura you see currently is um like everything on your friends. You doesn't uh doesn't seem magical in any way, as far as I can tell. Hmm. Worth having a look at anyway. It's an interesting situation, either. Well, the whole thing's interesting, yes, I agree with that. <laughs> Maybe, right. Right. All sure. to... Maybe her life was artificially extended, and she just forgets every day that it happened. No, I've, I've only been here months. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um... <laughs> Oh, by I... the way, didn't didn't go well for Thebo. You were sort of uh, overtaken by uh, the Mokal Empire, and then you rebelled. And who the fuck burned... are the Mokal Empire? Oh yeah, you missed so much stuff. Um, the God King was really good on taxes, actually, for businesses. Um, <laughs> His business rates were fantastic. <laughs> then he dropped uh, a bomb. On on Thebo and everything turned to stone. She she kind of like looks frantic around and goes, no, no, not this again, what? not this oh. again. This can't be happening. And then she moves over to the tent and disappears into it. You hear her rummaging around. What? Why is it that's happening again? Um, we found someone who's more screwed up than Macy. <laughs> not you. I'm asking her. She goes, you stay away. You stay away. And then as she. <laughs> 
co- she she's got something out, and you see she's got like a wooden case, like made of some sort of fine wood. That's the varnish is all pitted on it. She lifts it up, and she goes, "Oh, yes!" Grabs what looks like a small stopper, like a vial, pops it, necks it, throws it to the ground in front of in front of you guys, <laughs> and it just falls to the side. When she brought that out, did that seem magical at all? No. Well, Elsif is going to check for pulls. Oh. I feel like that's enough to check for pulls. Pulls? Pulse. pulse. Oh, pulse. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, nope. Dead. Well, this solves this problem. Moving on. Maybe a couple of minutes later, you see a figure from outside your dark vision, Lanyros. A half orc female with something on her shoulder. She drops it and looks at you all. <laughs> what are you all doing here by my wall? She's a half orc now. Sorry, it's right, an orc. And this is what are you all doing here by my waters? And it's she, a revenant orc. She goes low, and then as you look to the right, Orwin, you see a glow of magic, and her body just blows away with sand. And then she just look, leans forward and goes, "What are you all doing by my water? Who are you?" Oh, this is just hilarious. Can we keep her? This is going to take longer than we have. We're not here to take anything from you, and we'll be leaving. Oh, good, okay. You're more than welcome to stay, but, you know, I'll keep an eye on you. The last thing that happened is my javelins got stolen by some bugbear. Mm-hmm. Yes, we know. Thiebel lost the war to the Mughal Empire and was then uh, overtaken by it. I'll open the portal and just walk in. <laughs> After... They attempted a rebellion. The God King then uh, attempted to blow the entire city up, but they were instead turned to stone. What? What are you talking about? What's the moment? We fixed Empire? it with magic, but then a number of citizens became zombies. And uh, Adrian, them... this is just unnecessary. Cru- uh, Adrian, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is just unnecessary cruelty. Just come in and we can rest. I just want to see what happens. You know, it's got me curious as well. Macro continues on the story. The, the orc just looks confused. Ah, she oh, didn't do the same thing as what she did last time. Yeah, shame. Okay, I'm going to bed. Have we met before? No, no, not at all. Um, you're an adventurer, and then you got your caravan you were looking after killed. Yeah. How do you know that? I've just got really good insight skills. Kind of shifts her crystal bow from her shoulder. Um, well, do you want more gold? And, like, you can help us explore this area. We're trying to find, like, the crystal dark. I can't move far enough away without anything to drink, so I'm sticking by this water. Yeah, we've got loads of water. You'll be fine. Okay. And she sees an opportunity to get out of, like, out of the desert. She says, yeah, I'll come with you. All right, cool. Uh, we'll go chill in here for the night anyway. Macros just trying... Yeah, to, as far as you're concerned, you just disappeared. Perth mode activated. You just walked through a portal and just disappeared. Okay, so you guys go into the portal. Yep. And go to, go to um, assume you get some rest. Mm-hmm. Well, Macro tries his best not to make it an unrestful night as possible. Mm-hmm. Cool. So you guys sleep for a, get a long rest, get all your spell slots back. Uh, basically... Wow. You've not uh, made me roll the charisma chair. <laughs> but um, Maisie's uh, disease seems to fade away in the morning after a nice heavy breakfast made in the mansion. Everyone also gets a random 19 temporary hit points. That's very true. No, it's not 19. It's half your level plus your charisma modifier. Uh, uh, oh, so, so then it'll be... It'll, let me 11, it probably. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, know. You're 15 now, right? 16, sorry. Yeah. So 13, everyone is 13. Sorry, did you say we're 16? I didn't hear what... No, no, no. Hey. Right, we're level 16, boys. You heard it here first. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> off. King, motherfucker. No. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not half my level, it's my warlock level. Yeah, it's half I your warlock it. level. So you get your warlock level plus your charisma modifier, but your, all your allies get half your level. Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry, I was just didn't read it to the end. Yeah, so everyone gets temporary hit points equal to... Yeah, so it's 13. Yeah. And I get 18. It is. 13. Yeah, you, you all get 13, because we round up. 
Eight plus What's your five. charisma modifier, Todd? No, I get 20. Uh, five. Okay. Okay. She's hardly a cult of personality. Yeah, but that's that's a good that's a full level's worth of hit points. Come on, you can't that stuff. Mm -hmm. Cult the personality. So what does it end? What does it end up being? Eleven then, yeah. Thirteen. Thirteen. Cool. I don't hear many people singing. How, that, so how many did we get? We got a temporary bonus. Huh? How many did we get? Twelve. Adrian. <laughs> He's just doing it because of guys. <laughs> right, okay, so you, you can see outside the door, and you can see that the uh, the, sorry, the orcish woman is uh, shifting around, filling what looks like some clay jugs that she has with water, and is drinking. You can see that the morning sun is rising. Not in its full heat, still quite hot. Feel really bad for her. Can't we do something? Yeah, we're taking her with us. I think that's, that's the kind thing to do. Well, we should grab her on the way back, not take her to the Crystal Dark. No, no, she all know the area well. She Got wouldn't know it particularly well if she, uh, well, doesn't seem to remember anything for the past 200 years or so. And no, 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 she no, lost her somatic. caravan that she was supposed to be guarding, and she no, that wasn't her fault. In seemingly quite a while, so I would say she seems like a piss poor guide. Ma uh, well, Macro is very, uh, very adamant about her coming and seems to uh, disregard any valid concerns about bringing her. Well, 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 you you forgot uh, one aspect. We don't know yet if she comes with a riding goat. That would obviously <laughs> improve the quality of her guiding by a lot. <laughs> It's also the fact that the lay of the desert could quite possibly have shifted a substantial amount over 200 years. Oh, sand shifting never happens. Right. That's a no, Macra. This is All of this was a no. I, I'm not sure if that was clear. We're not taking her. No, no, it's okay. We, we can resolve this, don't worry. I'll just speak to, um, to Arwen on the side. What you thinking? I know it's free. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I'm trying to find, trying to find the bones you got in dust too after you've shagged. You know when you sleep with a lizard lady. I think it's just lucky, isn't it? Macro has that anyway. You didn't really catch that theme, but he wanted to sleep with her in the night. Who? I think he did. I thought he was just ignoring me. The orcish lady. Oh, he did. He genuinely missed it. Yeah, Macro's, <laughs> Macro's got a history of sleeping with orcish ladies, so he's going to continue this tradition. No. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even ask for a charisma check. Come on, man. No, she's not even there when you go back out into the night air. No, not scorching. <laughs> He was, trying, he was trying to get her back into the mansion to be fair. That wouldn't happen. Moving on. The morning, you step out into the sunlight, and she's, like I said, filling clay jugs, and she looks at you with wild eyes. Oh, you have ready to help me get out of here? You really do with getting home. I haven't seen my daughter in many, many months. <laughs> oh, I'll be over there, that dude. <laughs> I haven't seen her daughter, oh for lord. 200 years. <laughs> <laughs> before before we get started, can I have a word with you, Macor? And probably the rest of you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go on. Right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, can you roll a 100? A D 100? Ooh, funky shenanigans. Okay. Now, can you roll me a constitution saving throw? I think you're pretty good at these, but we'll see. I'll be better if I use an inspiration. 
Thank God for oh, that. Oh, God. All right, so as you go to teleport away, immediately the spell finishes and you go flying. And normally it's like instant. Normally you feel like you're just like there. This time, it feels like time has gone by. And it feels like you're traveling. And yet you actually manage to open your eyes mid-teleport this time to see sparkling, colorful, ethereal light all around you. And you look down and you feel like you're being grabbed by something, some otherworldly force not wanting you to leave. It grabs you, begins pulling you back. The pain that fills you, like, literally feels worse than when the mana soul manifests through strenuous casting, that kind of, that kind of like, tenseness in your chest. And it begins pulling you back, and you hear a voice. But you manage to push through, focus, your eyes blaze blue, and then you appear kind of like on flat ground about five six kilometers away oh didn't anybody else get that that was a lot tougher than it normally is you know how that ain't no did you have something funny tasty. for breakfast well, there was definitely something going on with or near that place and i get a vague sense of why she was trapped there uh why she doesn't seem to be leaving anyway but when I took us here, there was definitely some kind of, uh, some kind of arcane, I, I would assume, force that was trying to pull us back, I suppose. It took quite a lot of effort to break through. At that moment, can everyone make dexterity saving throws? No. Rude. Can I see it coming? No, you can't. No, I can't oh, make that save either. Oh, it doesn't matter. I've made the same is it the one. spell I get advantage if it is? It is not. Aww. Is it a dragon's breath attack? Nope. <laughs> uh... I feel like I'd see a dragon's breath attack coming. So, for a brief moment as Orwin's speaking, the ground rumbles, and it's perceptive enough for Orwin and Lanieros to feel it, and as you look around, then it's instant. There's no build-up to this, there's no kind of warning and immediate <laughs> spider sets that immediately all of you are being flung up in the air as great crystalline structures shoot up from the ground um Maisie gets one through parts of her leg and you immediately see a jet of blood go and as if it would splat to the ground it doesn't it's like gravity's been reversed you're all flung up into the air macro manages to grab onto a piece of detritus and grab himself down and push off and then grab onto a piece of a crystalline structure like a great crystal rib that has these notches in before it manages to grab and fling him up the rest of you uh kind of go end over end the world becoming topsy-turvy um you do have one round where you're in midair if anyone wants to use a reaction um so what's happening exactly you've just immediately we... gone from ground to about 300 foot in the air oh um well i'll, f I'll wait until i'm close enough to the ground to cast missy step Okay. I've cast Featherfall. I don't know if... Uh... Elsus is wearing flying boots. Alright, cool. Lanieros knows the spell if he recognises the casting. Saves him a spell. Mm -hmm. Alright, so all of you except Macra will take uh, 12 piercing damage from the initial rupture. But I'm assuming you're, help you're helping everyone else with Featherfall and stuff, including Maisie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, so. I guess I would feather fall as well because I was gonna like miss step once I got down to the ground. So yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Like if you recognise yeah. the casting, if you haven't already cast yours, then uh, yeah, no, immediately. And as feather falls cast and you all begin to land, Macra didn't even need it because you held on. Macra, you're just grappling onto this uh, <laughs> this rib like protrusion, holding on, and eventually there's a a silence. Maybe maybe twenty seconds later, and around you, rubble just begins to drop down. And you're standing on what looks like a huge crystalline crown, a platform that's flat with these fawny like ridges all around the edge. And below you, you see frozen in what looks like the crystal, some sort of large creature. Uh, humanoid in shape, but very, very big. Well, at least those temporary hit points came in handy. Mm -hmm. uh, what the fuck's happening? That's a very good question. What on earth is that? Any magic, Liam? Uh, yes, there are some abjuration magic, but not in the crystal, but like a fine shield surrounding the humanoid. It looks like something's uh, holding that thing in there. Maybe a stasis or keeping it safe somehow. 
No idea what caused it, though. Huh. If we get a closer look at <sighs> it. Uh, yes, um, so it's probably about 20 foot below you, uh, but it's kind of like, f like because of the way that the sun's hitting it currently, the morning sun, it's a difficult, you have to like step and then look around parts of the facets to like see if you can get a clear image, because the way it's being like fractured and, and stuff like that. But you do see it's a female with, uh, she's probably about 30 foot tall, um, wearing scale mail uh, with pauldrons with a motif of like lightning bolts. Um... Her hair is white and braided, and she's cradling a large battle axe that's probably about 20 foot from base to blade. Um, her kilt is made of massive plates of what looks like blue steel, and she wears sandals. Her eyes are closed. About it. Does she look anything like the Valkyrie? No, she doesn't seem to have wings. Um, her flesh is a different colour to, like, a Valkyr. Anyone seen anything like that before? Have I historically come across something like this? Um, you can make me a nature check. A nature check? Oh. I mean... Oh, um, the Nero's. Look at the Fey Elf going strong where the High Elf fails. <laughs> <laughs> that below you is a very big storm giant. Hmm. Ah. 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 Well, I guess that's one to probably leave alone. Yes. Shall we continue on? Mm hmm. You walking? Mm -hmm. Or we're doing more tele Are we doing more teleporting? Will we stay on our feet for a bit? I think we can walk for a while now. I mean, it's well, it must be only passing eight, nine o'clock, so we could probably go to ten or eleven before it really starts to heat up. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I have any mini money, Mo? Todd. Yeah. Roll, roll me a D ten, sir. Will do. Same again. All right. So, <laughs> as the group's moving, immediately it becomes obvious that the you're um, coming across maybe a hilly section because you're moving up, down, around. There's like ridges. Like like fine ridges, and it only takes a moment for uh, like Lineros to realise it looks like the ground here has been raked by like a giant rake, as if you're walking across some sort of oh rake, garden. it's fucking hell, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, like the fine Probably ridges. I'm not twitch then. The fine, the fine ridges and lines look like someone's like ran maybe large fingers through the sand, creating these sort of swirling. Uh, ridges. So we got a gigantic Zen garden, basically. Uh, maybe. <laughs> hmm. Just have a general look around the area. Just sure. It looks sky, pretty ground, flat. Everywhere. The sky's got a few odd bits of floating crystal, but nothing major. Carry on walking, I suppose. Okay. That's working. I'm trying to have a conversation with Elsa about her ability to create shoes that would be suitable for this kind of terrain. Because we can make it last for a couple of days, but it would be good to uh, get some replacements in with a kind of structure at the bottom that wouldn't disintegrate from walking on these. Do you have materials? Well, there's plenty around. Oh, like sand. Yes, perhaps you could melt some into something that we can walk on. Can Elsa melt something to something that they can walk on? There's not as much natural materials around, other than the thing <laughs> below your feet. Glass slipper. Uh, yeah, and, and the crystal. Cinderella slipper. 
Yeah, I don't know what the problem is with just making them out of like tempered glass or something. Like normally that'd be horrible if you're walking on stone, but if you're walking on like shards that will just move out of the way if you step on them with enough weight, then what well, the problem is? The problem is structuring the crystal. It looks brittle. Well, I'll just glue it together then. <laughs> I mean, if you've got some universal solvent, or whatever it's called, the legendary glue, then that'd be I'll awesome. sort us back to the dragon bone and back here. Oh, you're much help. Teleport anywhere, we just teleport back to Mokel and buy some shoes. I am sorry for being a crafter that cannot craft without materials. <laughs> well, one would presume that one would take the things that he needs with him to do the job. I remember taking, you know, my flying speeder with me it was rejected because you bum fucks wanted to teleport here. We were not all a fit on it. Nor could we teleport it along. Oh, but you could have magically teleported all the material that I need to outfit you in fine garbs with you, yeah? Probably. Yeah. If they wanted to. Don't smart don't you don't smart ass with me. Why don't you <laughs> slit your wrist in a corner? I just think you're very angry at the moment and it's not you. You should calm down. The mouse chuckles at the irony. I'll be over here wearing my flying shoes. And Elsa just. Will you? Floats a tiny bit over the things. Like. <laughs> like every now and then you just feel like a mage hand just tucking your foot down to the ground. <laughs> Dispel magic. <laughs> Alright, so it becomes to the point when you guys are approaching the zenith of the day when it's becoming incredibly warm. Right. Um, how much further do we think we have to go? Do we have any idea, then? You have no idea, because Macrod had no idea where the Crystal Dark was. There's yeah, nothing instinctually in kicking into him yet. Nope. The medallion on his chest starting to hum. Nope. <laughs> and what was Pull, that pulling in a certain direction. What did you want, Rocket? Sorry? I said, did we not get anything in our research? You did, but it was never like a location specifically. No, just there's entrances everywhere. You have <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess we're keeping an eye out, trying to find places where local inhabitants might be able to live. So I imagine we're looking for like where water possibly is, maybe not forgetful water or like bits of shadow or any vegetation or like anything that where something can live off the land like that's what we're aiming for to try and hope to to find some uh, locals maybe if we can f look at the topography and see if we can see somewhere where caves are more likely to be than other places because then we imagine that the caves will lead into entrances maybe um, but what would that be? That'd be a nature check to see if we can find where the caves are or survival. Um, currently, I guess none of that's going to help. I'll be honest. You are in the middle of a flat plain, slight ridges. You cannot see anything but the mountains to the north. I think we just got to keep heading for the mountains, aren't we? Are th are th these mountains up here then that we're heading for. When You're you not heading north. that way. You can just see them. You're actually heading east. In yeah, the so are we heading east in pretty much a straight like, line from where we entered here then? So we're just like heading this way then, yeah. Yeah, currently. I guess we've just got to keep heading like southeast then until we get to these middle bits. I imagine these have got caves and that we've got entrances to. Can we so, see yeah. those from where we are? Currently, no. Okay, so then I think we're going to go with the plan that, uh, that Alwyn had, which is teleport to the mountains. Because we can obviously teleport further in the one to go that way because we can see them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then... Um, spend some time to find a place where we can actually sit in shadow and then spend some time like scouting the area a bit more All and right. see what we can see below. Take an hour or something. Yeah, we should be able to see from pretty far up there. Just uh, be ready to grab onto something when we do the teleport because hitting a mountain is going to be a bit tricky. I'll have yeah. the feather fall yeah. prepare it, but... Uh, I was about to say, have that slow falling spell ready because yeah, that might be needed. Just be ready to 
grab onto something. All right, I'm gonna Should ask we you... attach each other with ropes as well? Is that an idea? We'll do no. that. Macro. I'd, I'd rather not, thanks. How far are you planning on going up the mountain, Alvin? We'll do a skill check here if you like see how precise you are as well with an arcana check, but... Not the peak, but a decent way up, two-thirds maybe, where it looks like there could be uh, plateaus or at least a less steep incline. All right, make me arcana check. Uh, yeah, I was going to suggest that I would do this teleport um, if I was still feeling strained from before. Uh, I don't mind, as long as uh, you can keep the ability to give us our rest spot afterwards. Of course. But uh, sure, then uh, I'll give your hand uh, sighting it out, shall we say. I.e. Mm -hmm. I'll give him advantage on the Arcana check and yep. we'll sit there and kind of geolocate between us. <laughs> yep. And uh, I'll teleport us. Alright, make the Arcana check. I will use one inspiration for this. You've already got advantage. I say, uh, oh, is it enough? Yeah. Okay. Alright. Yeah, because uh, he's helping you. Alright, so you immediately pinpoint and uh, you and Owen think like there's that slight ridge near the top. There's got to be a plateau up there. And you cast teleport, aiming to be in that direction. Make your D100 check. Give me a moment. Oh, i look this up. Alright, so what happens is a rush of energy. All of you immediately feel pain. A lot of pain. And then you are shunted maybe 50, 60 feet and land on a plateau, uh, hands and knees buried in thin layer of snow. Um, Fuck it that's cold. Oh, my balls. Give me a second, you're going to take some damage. <laughs> Fuck me, they're riding back inside of me. <laughs> Give me a second, I'm just rolling this. Okay, the entire group takes 67 force damage. That's a fair amount. That's mm. shit. That's a nickel bit. Yeah, 67 take away 13. Yeah, I'm afraid the DC was 20. That is 54. If you were at the base of the mountain, I would have made it a lot easier, but as soon as you were about 100 kilometers away, it was uh, quite a difficult thing to do. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it's it's a good roll, Rob. Rolling 67 on a 3d10. It wasn't 3d10. <laughs> I know, that's what the <laughs> that teleport uh, So you are on a large plateau. It's got odd bits of uh, like trees clinging to the side of the mountain face. Um, around you, uh, it's quite f like kind of like hilly. Like it's steep, leading up to the mountainside behind you. And it looks like you guys were shunted out of that part of it. And as you look down at below you, um, the weather's quite clear here. There's no clouds. Most of the clouds are above you. Of course, you and Orwin would have figured not to go above cloud line. And as you mm -hmm. look below, you can see the crystal waste below you, kind of like a gleaming white kind of crystal plate on the land. And you do from here see the rough, earthen looking hills in the center of the crystal wastes. From here, you can see them some hundreds of kilometers off. They're not as high as the mountains. There's like several hundred meters above the ground, so they're obviously visible from where you are. Uh, however, you can see glimmering lights all along them, like beacons. That area looks more like a normal desert. There's no white kind of color to the sand there. It's all kind of rough reddish and browns. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, um... So just to take a bit of a rest here, at least for an hour, to scope things out. Um, recover a little bit. Uh, grab something that's particularly from here. Sure. And, Sounds uh, good. 
then move on after that. Alright. It sounds alright to me. As you guys are resting, um, Lanyros, with your passive investigation, quickly making a, like, as you would, making a look around to make sure that you're safe. Um, mm -hmm. You find a waystone, a dwarven waystone. It's a, it's like a maybe five foot tall uh, stone structure with some runes carved into it. Do you speak dwarvish? Mm -hmm. um, if <sighs> I uh, don't Elsa. now, but I can just else if does do that. No, you can't answer cast a spell. You, you cast it as a ritual. Yeah. Um, Maisie. Yep. You look around. You can you can read the runes on the um on the uh, totem that uh, uh, Linearos has found. But do you just let him finish? No, she'll read them. To be fair. <laughs> hmm. uh, it says ten shanks was here. Dig ten pace down. Um, are you trying to read that? Mm hmm. It looks like it's a marker of some kind. Uh, dig down ten paces by the looks of things. Something stored there. Oh fuck! Did you dig down ten feet? And then you look Very again, exact. and it shifts ten fingers. Oh, sorry. I must have misread that. Maybe ten fingers down. You're not used to this reading malarkey, especially with languages that you weren't familiar with. Hmm. I can read things. Oh. Yeah, you did mention that you can ring, read out anything. Fucking nerd. Uh, Macro breaks our pickaxe from one of the bag of oldings and starts working his way down. Uh, Elseth, yeah, but do you have any stone cutters tools or anything like that? Uh, I have. I can create some. Do you mind just taking? Oh, so you can create them with no materials. Do you mind taking a wee piece off this uh, waste stone here? That'll probably be a good reference point. Mm hmm. Also, take some off. All right. Take a chunk of the stone. And just hands it to. Uh... I will make sure one of it. Alrighty. I can make tools, Macra, because I can make them from the tools I have. I can't make shoes because I don't carry a bag of leather with me. Well, um, mm -hmm. could you, mm -hmm. if I declare to you that my profession is like a hiker, would you be able to make me tools for my job, which would be shoes? <laughs> you know what? I call that Lanieros. <laughs> Just like... He noticed that over this journey, his hair is starting to go slowly from <clears throat> like a uh, blonde that it was for a while, uh, more mm -hmm. to reddish color. Hey, our world's getting in your hair. That's no more digging macro. That's that's not what's happening. But uh, good try. Oh, okay, macro can send you digging. Is he getting anywhere fast? Well, eventually you do hit what feels like after only about like you know a foot. You do hit something which sounds like wood. Well, we're digging through mud or like soil. Yeah, it's like kind of like a like soil, um, kind of like hard packed frozen soil. All right, cool. No, no, no. Dunk. Oh, oh, that's something. Macro mm -hmm. digs around it and then sees he can pull it out of the ground. All right, it seems to be a chest of sorts. Uh, it's no. oh, sweet. Not well adorned or anything like that. It's it's maybe about three foot by two foot, and it's flat. It's not one of those like arched um, lids. It's just flat, and you can see someone nailed the top down rather than rather than it actually being shut. No, oh, nice. Macro like puts it out outside of the hole whilst he's still stood in the hole, and then like jams his pickaxe in it and cracks it open. All right, see. So you... I take a couple of steps back. And I'm glad you did. Can you make a deck saving throw, please? Uh, God damn it! Macron. Well, I, I'm glad I said I put it outside the hole. Now I'm in the hole, so I just duck into the hole. <laughs> no, we'll get in. It worked. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, and everyone sees a lightning bolt <laughs> out the hole, reach up to the sky some sixty feet, and Macro, you manage to like duck out of the way. You still take half damage though. Uh, but you take, um, yeah, you take a total of thirteen lightning damage as you jump out of the way and get shocked, singeing your singeing your back hairs. Jesus Christ! Um, right, yeah. So that was bad and everything because I've just got electrocuted a bit and now I look a bit fuzzy. Um, a lot of blue dragons around. 
and we've just cast a fuck off bolt of random lightning into the air. I meant for all the blue dragons that were said to be around here. We haven't actually seen one. We just saw a scholar one. Oh, I, I am sorry. I'm pretty sure the skull dragon is gonna rise and go to the lightning bolt location. No, but whereas the skulls, it's normally living ones around. I mean, how many other animal skulls do you just see dotted about? When you know you know that there's deer about, but then how often do you see the skulls sat there? When it comes to larger creatures, quite often wheel graveyards, elephant graveyards, these sort of things. That doesn't validate my point, though. Sure. Up. How often do you see a deer skull about? Yes, Fucking I know heavy. It, I know it doesn't know validate your point. That's why I'm mentioning it to invalidate your point because you're talking nonsense, Mark. There's fucking loads of blue dragons about, okay? There was a, wasn't that thing a fucking storm giant thing as well? I wonder if there's any of them up here as well. I feel like you're being a bit paranoid. Is there anything else other than lightning in that box? Uh, so you take any residual magic or anything are still you, left on it? Are you peering down? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I also was curious enough. Uh, what about you, Owen? I mean, what do you mean peering down? It's like in a little ditch, isn't it? So, like you said, no, no, Michael lifted it out of the ditch. Ah, it's on like the side of the ditch. Uh, there's no residual magic around the actual chest, but there is residual magic glowing inside of it. Okay. Uh, there's something inside, but uh, just be careful anyway. Uh, yeah, I guess Elsa just approaches it. Awesome. Okay, so inside is cloth. A fine gold cloth laid out and fold perfect folded perfectly on it are is the skull a squat of what looks like a dwarf something is carved into its forehead uh looks like the symbol of a hammer that's pretty morbid what type of magic emanates from it nothing emanates from the skull it's just around the edges below the cloth you see like a faint glow Oh, no, Makra, there's a dwarven skull. Let's hope the dwarves don't show up. <laughs> the dwarves are normally nice, though. Why would we not want them show up? As if it's going to start repairing, identify. Uh, before you just check what's under the cloth underneath the skull. As if checks under the cloth underneath the skull. Okay. One moment. There is it's a... It's a blue dragon in a box. <laughs> yeah, and it bounces out like a jack-in-the-box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pet. Uh, there, there is a ring. Um, by the way, Liam, I keep forgetting, so maybe mention it to me when I fade a saving throw, I can use a reaction to add something to it. Oh, okay. Yep. There is a ring under there. Okay, so that's uh, three identifiers, the cloth, the skull, and the ring, yeah? I think it's just the, just the ring. That's a good piece of cloth. Is the cloth not looking magical, Owen? William, can you confirm which uh, of the three? It's the ring that looks magical. The um, For you, uh, as an arcane um, caster, the, the skull could have religious kind of divine significance. However, with your sight, of detect magic, it's definitely the ring that's given off the arcane magic. Okay, so the skull is just nothing, yeah? Mm -hmm. It looks to be that way. I mean, it would be some kind of religious thing. I'll just throw the skull away. <laughs> just tosses it down the mountain. <laughs> okay. He just tossed the uh, yeah. divine skull down the <laughs> <laughs> just flying down the mountains like nobody tosses a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, it's <laughs> can't believe you fucking did that. Never mind. Oh, um, any... oh, I was gonna eat that. Oh, that is fucking lucky. Jesus Christ. All right, so after you finish casting identify on this, it's got an amethyst and a jade um, on the top of it, like buried into the gold kind of ring. It is a ring of poison and psychic resistance. Requires achievement. I'm gonna guess it uh, resists poison and psychic. Yep, and that was rolled for, and it got psychic for fuck's sake. <laughs> Mark Rath, do you want that? Not even remotely. Not even remotely. 
Uh, anyone else uh, free to attune to items? No. Don't think Maisie's got a lot of gear. Uh, I don't. No. Uh, what's a tune? Okay, if you... It's like getting in touch with an item. I can give it a go. Well, we're planning to sit down for a while anyway. I'll walk you through the steps. Alright. So, um... You wanna... Oh, fuck me, that means Maisie's got like so many resistances. Unbelievable. Poor. Jeez. Yeah, because necrotic, radiant, poison, psychic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay, yeah, so... Uh, if you want to write that down, and write that you're attuned to it. Uh, however, yeah. while attuned to it, you do realise it has a name card on it. Despite being a magical item, it has the name Ten Shanks card in it. I feel like I'm stealing it from someone. Oh, well, you can give it back to him. I think his skull is lying down somewhere at that mountain. I don't think that was Ten Shanks. He wouldn't bury himself. If he put the marker saying about Ten Shanks was here... I don't think he buried himself. Maybe someone else buried him and just left a note. Perhaps that would make more sense. Psychic and poison, maybe. Yep. Cool. And what was the item called? Ring of Psychic and Poison Resistance. Oh, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I guess you could call it Ted Shanks Ring of Psychic and Poison Resistance. Yeah, let's, let's give it the... the, the personal touch. Alright, so what are you doing with the cloth? Um, the cloth is not magical, right? Elf just pockets it. Right. Right, just ten shanks cloth, and I'll know what that means. Are we I sure? Well, if we are hanging out, I guess I'll identify it to discern its value. <laughs> okay, it's uh, a very um, old piece of cloth that never seems to have lost its luster and shine. Ten Shanks cloth was worn by the by the pal the high paladin of four, Ten Shanks. This cloth is worth about ten thousand gold pieces sold to the right what? church. Well what I'll have that. Oh Alpha doesn't <laughs> say this. He just, he just <laughs> threw he just threw his skull off the cliff. Why do you what the He must have buried himself then. He bury never mind. Um, <laughs> where's his skull at, anyway? Sorry, I'm just trying to portray her rough reading of Dwarvish, and you're all taking it very literally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Elsa literally speaks Dwarvish. Yeah, you could have read it. Like, it's got fine Dwarvish runes all around the edge, um, like, describing his t tall tales during Ragnarok. I would have continued casting from my languages after it. Yeah, I mean, it says... It, okay, so in Dwarvish, it does say... Uh, it does say, High Paladin Ten Shanks buried here in honour of four. Thunderbolts uh, of lightning carried him away to heaven. With a halitzer. Uh, I will be back in a second and Elsa <laughs> starts flying down the mountain <laughs> to with the skull. Make an investigation check. So, unrelated, it just looks like there's a tree growing at the top of Adrian's head. It does, yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea where the skull went. I thought at some point he'd styled a man bun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't find the skull. It just has gone. This mountainside's steep, and it could have kept rolling for a while. It could be nestled in any of these crevices. Next time I'll read the gravestone myself. Could I roll hit die? Are we short resting, did you say? Yeah, you guys were short resting. So if you want to roll your hit die now, just to get some hit points back. Also, whenever you short rest, you get your temporary hit points from Maisie back. Yep. Sweet. So is it ten then? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're you're fucking funny, lad. You are. <laughs> you you're funny. You are. Fucking funny. You are. <laughs> and uh, I think the dispenser of level ups. <laughs> <laughs> this, we're, we're nearing our next one. It's five minutes away. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Okay, so what what are you guys doing after you're having your short rest and digging through uh, some high paladin's gr ancient grave in the unknown mountains? So, are we gonna try and aim for the uh, oh the rocky outcrops down there, or <laughs> Elsa just looks down the mountainside a bit frustrated. <laughs> Fucking dwarfs. Oh, exactly the right amount on my hit points. Get in. What do you think, Lanieras? 
<sighs> um. Well, I think get in there somewhere. And then search from there. More likely to be caves where there's mountains, right? So somewhere near the base then, maybe. Mm-hmm. We can make our way up from there. We're down. Okay. So where are you going? To the... The, the I, kind of... I am, I am aiming... If I can draw it, oh, it's a bit dark. I don't know if you can see that. I can see that. I'm aiming for about there at the base. All right, that sounds good to me. Um, so you'll gather up, Maisie. You good? Good at the moment. All right, and boof, and all of you uh, feel that familiar lurch, and you boof, straight away heat. You've gone from cold to heat. And as you land in this area, in front of you, immediately what you see is this very large temple. Cliffs and crags around you spill sand down into this small ravine where you've landed. In front of you, there's a carved facade, like a, like a great uh, doorway with pillars decorating it. Gemstones studded in this facade, gleaming off of the sunlight above you. Nearby, vultures uh, call and fly away, and the ground around you is cracked and filled with ruins, like parts of the ruins. Pillars line this pathway. Behind you, the pathway is blocked as parts of this craggy, rocky, red cliff face rise up, and then you see it, and you all look to your right. At first, you smell the ozone in the air, and then you see the lightning oh, crackling along its... Sake. La lightning crackling along its wings and its horn crackles with lightning. Its eyes are black and bleak like death and just coloured like obsidian. And its claws hit the side of the side of the cliff face and it begins to chuckle. <laughs> Somebody's entered my lair. Hello. And that's where we'll end the session. That's got to be the largest dog I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah.